You are listening to the Cattle Call Podcast. This is the place where computer-aided design and drafting meets humor and practicality, with a touch of business acumen thrown in for fun. Jim and Rocco, the owners of Zentech Consultants, the premier U.S. technology consulting firm for architecture, engineering, construction, and manufacturing, discuss the fascinating world of CAD with some humor and some honesty. The Cattle Call Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Cattle Call Podcast with Jim and Rocco from in yeah, from Zentech Consultants. I don't know what I was thinking there. I don't where even do know you where we're from. Where we are today, Jim? La La Land. I, I listen. I like La La Land. I live there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for your patience, folks. I am Jim, your obviously silly host today, and with me, as always, is my partner. It's Rocco. It's Rocco. Rocco with his his dull downbeat intro, right? So I'm changing things up. Hey, today. at least I know the name of our company. All right, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but it's not going to save you. And I want everybody out there to know that what I'm about to do next and what is going to become a regular feature on the show is Rocco's Full. Because I'm out here trying to get an upbeat intro, get everybody pumped for whatever our topic is for today. And I'm, I'm, I'm partnered here with Eeyore, who just goes, whatever. <laughs> I'm Rocco. So you know what I said? But bad, bad luck for everybody. A buddy of mine actually, he, he, he emailed me a link to a website that has uh, engineering jokes and there's hundreds of them. And I'm like, oh, I'm not letting this go. So new feature on the show, Rocco. We're starting with a joke every week. You ready? Here's your first joke. You ready? Here we go. Okay. So look, so so three engineers are riding in a car, right? And, and they, they start to go down a hill, right? You got an electrical engineer, a mechanical engineer, and a software engineer. They're riding in a the car. They start to go down the hill. And they lose control, spin out, bam, smack right into a tree. Mechanical engineer jumps out and he goes, oh, man, must be something with the brakes. Let me crawl into the car and check it out. And the electrical engineer gets out and he goes, you know, I'm sure it was something wrong with the electrical system. Let me get under the hood and check it out. The software engineer gets out and says, you know, I think we should push this back up the hill and try it again. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, They're terrible jokes, but I absolutely love them. So I will be using those. There's no way I'm letting that resource go. (laughs) <laughs> uh, just way too many of them made me laugh too hard. My inner engineering geek just loved it. Um, all right. So what are we talking about? Today? Oh, I know what we're talking about today, Rock. We're talking about uh, the, our, our topic is PDFs to drawings and then back again. Um, and that, that this I love this topic because it's such a, a common setup, right? Because it, it really doesn't matter which side of the design build fence that you stand on, whether you're a designer or a GC. You know, we, we all run into issues with having files that are in one format when we need them in another. Um, you know, in particular, this is a huge issue with PDF and DWG files, right? The PDFs and the drawings. Uh, you know, they're, they're the two most common types of construction documents, you know, at least in terms of files that, that we see out there. Um, <clears throat> you know, DWG files, they're, they're kind of the mainstay of the design world. Um, and all major CAD systems like BricsCAD and AutoCAD, or an AutoCAD. Man, I can't speak today, Rocco. It, you, we're doing this late on a Friday. My tongue doesn't want to doesn't want to do anything. Um, either of these systems, all right, will work with the DWG files uh, natively, right? And or or at the very least, they they provide the uh, capacity to import or export or convert to the to that DWG format. Um, you know, and DWGs these are CAD based design files using vector line work and blocks and so on uh, to create the overall design for any project. And, you know, PDFs, on the other hand, are what most people in the construction world are dealing with on a daily basis, right? These are, you know, portable document format files, right, PDF. Um, And they're the primary digital output from a CAD system, right? And that's what's normally delivered to clients and contractors. Um, And they're used because you don't have the fear of those end users modifying the original design. Um, You know, an, an important thing, I think, to remember here in the design build world is that the CAD design, right? The actual design of a project is, and usually remains, the intellectual property of the signing architect or engineer. Um, You know, the the project owner or the client is technically only leasing the rights to a single instance of that design to build their facility or site. Um, And that's why design firms are always so reluctant to share their DWG files on a project. Um, it's their property, and they don't want anybody modifying or copying it and using it for other projects. Um, and that's where that PDF comes in. It's normally a, a static presentation of the design, 
uh, that can't be easily edited. It's, 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 it's basically, it's a digital piece of paper. All right. So they're happy to give out PDFs whenever you want. Uh, you know, the problem of course, is that sometimes, you know, the, the contractors, the GC could make real good use of a drawing file for, you know, measurements and takeoffs and layouts and, and alterations. Um, and, and, and on the other hand, right, sometimes the design firms are stuck with PDF files themselves from other professionals. Uh, you know, the structural engineer maybe only has the PDFs of the architectural plans if they're not working, you know, directly as a sub for the architect. You know, the, the reality is, is that at some point, we all need to be able to convert our PDFs to drawing files and drawing files back to PDFs, right? And, and kind of the how-to of that is what I want to talk about today. All right, so so Rocco, does does access to or conversion you know between PDFs and drawings come up in in your conversations a lot? Um, is it something more important to contractors or designers in in your experience? Yeah, it comes up pretty often, and I I mean I think it's more on the on the design side, but it but it definitely comes up from both both um, angles. I mean it's it's a it's a it's a huge um, way. To communicate right to effectively communicate and work with folks so definitely i mean especially around the blue bean work that we do okay. all right so so let's start with kind of the general concept of, of converting these files back and forth and then we'll get into you know the systems that can help you do this in the second half of the show uh and when it comes to converting pdfs into a drawing format uh there are really two ways of handling the situation and you're going to have to kind of decide which method is going to best meet your needs. Uh, you know, number one is the concept of a PDF underlay. Um, and this is where, you know, we, we take what is essentially an image of the source PDF and we import it into our CAD system, right? That, that underlay becomes a background image inside the drawing file that you can scale and rotate and so on to your correct size and location within your drawing for your job. Um, and, and this lets you very quickly do, uh, you know, visual checks and, and look for layout consistency between the PDF and the drawing CAD environment. You know, I think the real benefit of the underlay concept uh, is that it's really it's a reference file. Um, in other words, when when there are changes or additions like field notes and red lines and punch keys, things like that to the source PDF. I, those will automatically show up inside your DWG file. Um, and, 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 you know, a lot of people really like this and find it really useful because it's a great way to communicate, you know, what's happening in the field, uh, you know, to the design staff back in the office, right? Especially since almost all field people on the construction end have access to, you know, some PDF editing tool, very commonly, like Rocco was saying before, Bluebeam, right? That, that kind of, of tool. Um, so, Rocco, how important are construction document editors like, you know, Bluebeam, right, uh, to our client base? I mean, uh, you know, am, am I crazy or, or are most of these guys using these types of tools to help them improve communication? No, it's, it's I mean, whether it's a small firm up to your, you know, up to your big, big firms, it's, it's, it's huge. I mean, yeah, <clears throat> I mean, most of them are using Bluebeam. I mean, at some level, I think some some folks are are, are still using Adobe, but um, you know, Bluebeam is huge. It's 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 critical. Yeah. Now, I mean, you know, there are still some folks out there who, who will even open up, and you know, modern web browsers will will open up PDFs, but generally, they're not sufficient for what you know we're trying to to accomplish in the construction world. So the the, the PDF editors I find are everywhere now. Um, so you know, the the second way I said there were two ways, right? The second way that you guys can convert your PDF to a DWG file is via the, the PDF import function, uh, which is fairly common in ma uh, modern CAD systems. Uh, what it does is it, it, it lets you actually convert the PDF information to native drawing elements. Um, and, and I think an important thing to understand here is that, you know, all CAD systems, without exception, all CAD systems are vector-based. Uh, meaning that they use lines as their basis, okay? Uh, and, and, you know, a, a line, it basically starts at point A, it goes to point B, and the line between those in a CAD system is a single solid object. It's, it's one item. Uh, whereas, you know, PDFs, on the other hand, are pixel-based, okay? Um, 
there's really no such thing as a real, you know, quote unquote line in a PDF, right? What we see as lines in a PDF is actually a series of square dots called pixels that are, you know, strung real tightly together to look like lines and text and so on. Um, and, and the PDF import tool will actually recognize the difference between pixelated lines and text and convert them to the appropriate vector-based items in the CAD system that you're using. Uh, you know, and this means that after the import is, is complete, you're left with, with actual vector-based drawn lines and polylines and arcs and text and so on in the drawing file that you're able to create and, and kind of, you know, reverse engineer right from the PDF. Um, and, and those entities are, are now fully intelligent and editable via the CAD system, right? You can scale them up uh, to actual sizes and proceed to draft and run inquiries and so on, right? Just as if you had drawn all of that from scratch inside the DWG files. Uh, so yeah, Rocco, we do, you, or well, you do, right? A lot of, a lot of CAD sales. <laughs> and I do the support here for systems like BricsCAD. Um, is, is the PDF import tool in those systems as important to the, to the end users as, as I think it is from the tech side? Yeah, because they it, it's it's a way to um, I mean nobody wants to share their their true DWG file, right? So it's 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 a method to to communicate, um, you know, with with folks that they're working with at all levels. Uh, so yeah, I, I, and you know, I mean, gone are the days, right, when you used to print <laughs> stuff out and drop it off, you know. <laughs> At, a, at an engineer's office, you know, so it's 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 the way to do it now. Yeah, and I say, thank goodness that's gone. You know how many hours of my life were spent making copies and printing copies and delivering them to job sites? That was, that was a huge part of my job when I was younger. Um, all right, so you know, the, the last component here, I guess, in this half of show I want to talk about is, is how do we move this in the other direction? In other words, how do we go from the DWG file to a PDF file? Um, and the good thing is this is really, really common and it is very simple. Um, it's basically a matter of printing. That's all it is. Um, you know, all CAD systems have uh, the basic ability to print the, the, the drawing information out to a PDF. Um, you know, whether with, you know, built in, you know, DWG to PDF drivers, or you can use the standard Microsoft PDF drivers, or, or maybe even have a plug-in printer, right? A, a, a PDF printer like Bluebeam. Um, you know, like I said earlier, right, this is a common practice for design firms. So the process for them really is as simple as hitting the plot button inside the DWG, right? And then they just pick the PDF printer they want to use and they're done. Um, and, and I like, you know, personally, I like to use the DWG to PDF options uh, for 2D drawings, right? And then I use plugins like the Bluebeam for 3D work, right, when I'm doing that kind of stuff. And then I use the Microsoft printers. Right, for business documents like specs and contracts and so on. Um, and, and any one that you choose is fine. Uh, but I will, I will gonna say two things here that are vitally important uh, to effectively generate a usable PDF. Number one, please make sure that you guys are printing the PDF to the correct page size. Right? Don't make the mistake of thinking that scale doesn't matter here because this is a digital file that people are gonna zoom in and out of. It matters a lot, right? If your drawing layout tab is, is set for 24 by 36, right? Like a D-size sheet, uh, make sure you print the PDF at 24 by 36, please, right? Because if you plot this thing as an eight and a half by 11, it's gonna print, right? But you make life a lot harder on the contractors who are trying to use it to measure and do estimates and, and QTO. Um, so you know, please take the, take the time to do that guys. Um, your second, all right? Yeah. Please, 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 please always, always include, please, please one more, please. Not enough pleases on this. Uh, include the used layer information as part of the PDF print. Um, you know, look, this is a simple checks, check box, right? Under your printer settings. And what it does is it, it will include your active layers information in the PDF. This means that contractors have the ability to turn layers on and off and even isolate them in the PDF, which is a massive time saver. Right? You want to you build a good reputation with, with GCs and have them recommend you to other owners and clients? Just include the layer information in your PDFs and these guys will love you. <laughs> okay. All right. So I tell you what, let's, uh, 
Let's let's take a pause here for me to get some coffee into my system and stop stumbling over my words today. And we'll get a quick word in from today's sponsor. Stand by, folks. We'll be back in just a minute with more of the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody. Today's Cattle Call Podcast is being sponsored by both Rocco and I. Uh, Zentech, we want to talk to you guys about our Blue Beam Review Toolset Kickstart program. Uh, look, do you guys fight with trying to get reliable, repeatable quantity takeoff and markup items from your Bluebeam software, right? Are you guys frustrated having to go in and change and modify the display properties of every single item that you create inside a review? Well, that's what we're here to help you guys with the Kickstart program. Uh, we give you tools that you need built to your specifications at an affordable fixed cost. Um, you can fully develop tool sets for any industry. Doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter what you do, we can help you work better with Bluebeam custom tools. So Rocco, why don't you tell folks how they uh, get info on our Kickstart program? Yeah, the big thing is it is, like you said, Jim, it's one fixed price. So it's twenty nine ninety five, uh, and uh, we can help you to, to to prove to your management uh, what... Is it, what is it $29.95? No, Jim, it's $2,995. Thank you. Just wanted to clarify. <laughs> oh, of course. So hit up our website, check out the details. We'd be happy to talk to you. It's uh, zentechconsultants.net. Reach out to us, sales at zentechconsultants.net, or give us a ring, 866-824-4459. All right, the Bluebeam Review Toolset Kickstart Program, everything you guys need to be Bluebeam experts. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Cattle Call Podcast, where we're talking about converting right files back and forth between pdfs and dwg files which is kind of a, a, a ubiquitous function in our world um you know in, in the first half you know we talked about the general concepts of this process and in this half um i want to talk a bit more about the actual process and what systems on the market can handle the conversions and how um so so let's begin with the pdf underlays right and and the pros and cons of that uh, for starters, just about any CAD system these days has the ability to use an underlay, though, you know, they might be called references or backgrounds in some programs. Um, you know, uh, BricsCAD and AutoCAD both use underlays uh, and they do it in an identical fashion, right? So you can do what we're talking about here in either system. Uh, you know, MicroStation also has a full underlay system, uh, though it works a bit differently and they don't natively use the DWG format. Um, but they, they do a real nice job on their conversions. Um, you know, so, so basically to load a PDF in any of these CAD files, you run the PDF underlay command, um, and then you browse to where the source PDF is on your network, right? Uh, you know, the big key here is that PDFs can contain multiple sheets. So you're going to have to select the individual page that you want to bring in as a background. In, in other words, if your PDF has 50 sheets in it and you need the information from you know, sheet 25, you're gonna have to tell the CAD system that, right? No CAD system that I know of can import more than one PDF sheet at a time. Um, you, know, you, you can repeat the process and import multiple sheets as you need to, right? So if you need to import 10 of them, just run it 10 times. Um, and you know, once you've placed the underlay, uh, you're going to see that it comes in very small in the model space of your drawing file. Um, and that makes sense when you consider right, that a PDF is really a digital piece of paper, right? So if your plan is, is a 24 by 36 sheet, it's actually going to come in as a two foot by three foot image in model space, right? You'll, you'll need to use the scale command, right? Which is you know, usually with the reference option. Uh, which lets you, you know, pick two points that you know the distance between and then type in the correct size, right? Um, so, you know, essentially you scale, you pick your two points on screen, you know, say between two column center lines, right? Which is likely to read as like four inches or so when you first bring it in, right? And then you just, you, you pick those two points and you type in that that gap should be 25 feet or, you know, whatever the correct value is on your plan. Um, and then the CAD system will scale up the entire underlay to the correct size, right? So then you can start measuring, sketching, you know, whatever it is you need to do. Um, I will point out here though, that, that, that since an underlay is still pixelated, it's still that, that PDF pixels, you are likely going to get reduced resolution and some sketchy looking lines this way. 
um, which it's fine for reference and, and quick measures, but it's not always great if you're trying to, you know, print from, from those. Okay. So, um, so, you know, Rocco, are there, are there a lot of folks who need help with this type of work or most people who you deal with, do they seem comfortable with it already? I mean, is, is general use of like you know, images and underlays and maps pretty well understood at this point, or is it still kind of a mystery to a lot of folks? I, I, you know, it depends on the user, right? I mean, we're all, we're all skilled at some level or not, or, or, or another, but um, I, I think people are more uh, adept at, at using this. I mean, I, I remember back in the, back in the early days of, you know, in my previous life at, 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 an, at an Autodesk reseller that I worked for and, and this kind of people used to calling constantly for all this kind of stuff, you know, I, they, they, they were just struggling with it, you know, so, but uh, at this time has gone on, I think everybody's kind of gotten used to working in one way or another. Yeah. Is, has everybody mastered it? No, I'm sure there's, there's <laughs> better best practices, but uh, yeah. I, I find it on the tech side that you're you're absolutely right on the you know for like architects engineers they 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 spend so much of their life in the in the CAD and the design software that they do get very comfortable with it. I, I still find a lot of folks in the construction side who who you know they're construction guys. They're not always you know like we've talked about a million times on the show. They're always not you know leading the way in the in the technology charge. <laughs> Put it that way. Um, yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, I, I work a lot with both BricsCAD and, and, and a whole array of, of AutoCAD based products. Um, and all of them have the ability to do the, the PDF import function, right? Which converts the PDF to DWG line work, right? Um, and, and this, the process here for, for the import is very similar to what we discussed with the underlay process, right? You're going to run your PDF import tool, right? And then select the PDF source from your network. Right, and the appropriate sheet that you want to import. Right, so the the important point here is that there is an option in the PDF import. It's a little checkbox usually in most of these systems it says you know import the PDF as a block, um, and I I suggest that you guys always turn that feature on, right, because you're going to have the same scaling problem as we discussed with the underlay here. Right, the source is still a 24 by 36 piece of paper. Uh, if you bring the line work in as individual items, uh, it's going to be a lot harder to select and scale and move and rotate thousands and thousands of lines into the correct locations and positions. Um, and, and that's particularly true. You're going to find if there are like shaded and hatched areas in your source PDF. Um, but by importing it all as a block, right, you, you can manipulate everything as one item until everything has been sized and scaled and rotated and moved to, to, to exactly where you need it. And, and once that's done, you can just use the explode command to break the block back down to its component items. Um, you know, and, and another thing is, you know, when you're doing the, the PDF import, uh, you'll also have an option, right? It's called create layers from PDF, right? And there's another option is create layers per entity type. Um, you know, the create layers from PDF option, it's going to use the layers that exist in the PDF, right? It's going to import those and, and put the line work on those layers. And it's just going to usually just prefixes them with the letters PDF, right? Uh, which is really convenient. It makes it real easy to tell you, oh, it's PDF dash storm. Oh, that's my storm layer, right? Uh, that came in from the PDF. Uh, you know, the second option, right? Which is the creating per entity. That will create basic layers for items like, you know, geometry and fills and text. And, and the program will sort all the lines onto the geometry layer and text onto the text layer and so on. Um, and, and you can also choose uh, to have all the lines import to whatever your current layer is, which I'm personally not a huge fan of, uh, but I can see it being useful in, in a couple of specific instances. Um, and, and, and the last thing that you're going to want to look at, right, when, once you've done this, right, you, you've done that um, PDF import. Uh, is using a tool like uh, they have in BricsCAD. It's called the Optimize tool. And what it does is it finds broken or angled lines and, and, and it cleans them up automatically. Um, you know, the, the one issue you're definitely going to see in a PDF import is that the lines aren't always orthogonal. <laughs> and, and things like a dash line can come in as, as a whole bunch of little tiny separate entities. Right? And, and a tool like BricsCAD's Optimize can really help you clean that up really, really quickly. 
Um, so, you know, Rocco, do you see clients asking a lot about using the underlays and images and maps in conversations? Um, and, and if, if you do, and if, if, if folks who are listening need help with this, what, what do we do? To, what, what do we offer here at Zentech for those folks? Yeah, it doesn't come up too often, but, uh, you know, I mean, if, you know, if you, if you guys need help, just, just reach out whether, you know, probably our best way to, to help out is, is, you know, through, uh, through our tech block services where, um, you know, you, you pre-purchase hours and, uh, and we can help you pretty much with any of your, uh, your CAD or PDM, PDF, uh, related needs. There you go. Um, so, all right. So, you know, one one kind of final thought here for going in the, the drawing to PDF direction, right? The opposite way here. Uh, when you use tools like Bluebeam, right, which has a CAD plugin for helping you to print PDFs, right? It shows up in your CAD system. You're likely to see in, in the more advanced plugins a print to 3D PDF option. Uh, and I am a huge, huge fan of this. This is so underused. Um, what it does, right, the print to 3D PDF, it lets you print items from tools like Bricks CAD BIM or Revit, right, Inventor, whatever you're using, out to a PDF as a fully functional 3D and BIM PDF model that you can rotate, pan around, you know, isolate objects, and even see the BIM data all in the native PDF format inside of a tool like Bluebeam. Uh, and, and what's really, really impressive about this, what I really love about this is that the PDF file that we do this way, it's usually only about five to 10% of the size of its CAD or BIM counterpart, right? So that it can be used in the field and on phones and tablets and two-in-ones, right? Uh, the, you know, the, the 3D PDFs that you can pull from, from one of these systems, absolutely amazing. Um, it's, you know, I've done a couple of webinars on it. If you guys want to see it in action, so so Rocco, wake up. Tell me where where do they find the webinars? Yeah, well, you 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 would need uh, Bluebeam Review CAD for that, right, Jim? No, no, no. I mean, the web, but to do that to create it, yeah, yeah, you need the Bluebeam Review CAD or the Extreme. Either one of those will plug, will will give it there. It kind of stacks. Um, right. But yeah, that's how you build those. Yeah. Yeah. So so to to address your questions, uh yeah, we do have a, a number of webinars that are available on demand. You can actually hit up our website, zentechconsultants.net, and, and check out either what's available on demand or what's coming up live and, you know, learn some more stuff. All, all more stuff. We're all about the stuff. And I think I bored <laughs> poor Rocco enough with, with the technical CAD stuff. <laughs> So, I, I'm, you know, it, it's a Friday before a holiday weekend here. I'm going to get let, let Rocco go back to lounging by his pool for the rest of the day, which is what he does best. Uh, uh, oh, oh, you mean you mean the baby pool in the backyard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, with, with a little rubber duck in it and you got the sprinkler hose going. Yeah, I didn't say it was a big pool. <laughs> Listen, it's more than I got. I have to be envious of your little sprinkler pool. <laughs> All right, folks, we're going to get out of here. We'll catch you next time on the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody, today's cattle call was brought to you courtesy of Zentech Consultants. That's Rocco and I. Uh, Zentech Consultants works with design and manufacturing firms to help our clients purchase and implement the software that they need in these complex industries. Uh, we provide a single point of contact for clients to buy, develop, and learn the most vital software systems for your specific needs. Uh, Zentech strives to be your trusted technology partner from your initial needs all the way through long-term support and training for your entire staff. So Rocco, why don't you tell them how to reach out to Zentech? All right, yeah, you can reach out to us through zentechconsultants.net. You can email us at sales at zentechconsultants.net. Or you can even call us, 866-824-4459. Excellent. We look forward to hearing from you all.